the Walker County Jane Doe. On November 1st, 1980, the new body of the girl, estimated to be between the ages of 14 and 20, was discovered by a truck driver who had been driving past the Sam Houston National Forest. She was lying face down in an area of grass about 20 feet from the shoulder of Highway 45, Interstate Highway 45 and just two miles north of Huntsville, Texas. The girl had been deceased for approximately six hours. So placing her death around 3.20 a.m., she had a rectangular brown pendant containing a smoky blue or brown glass colored stone on a thin gold chain necklace that was found around her neck. Her ears was pierced, although there were no earrings found in her ears at the crime scene. She had high heel red leather sandals with light brown straps, which investigators found out that the girl had been carrying while she was alive. They were recovered from the scene, although the remainder of her clothing was missing. Now at the time of the autopsy, the Walker County Jane Doe was approximately 5 feet 6 inches in height. She weighed between 105 and 120 pounds. And um, she was described by the coroner as well nourished. Um, it was thought to be that she was at least and um, was raised in a middle class income bracket. She had um, hazel eyes. Her hair was about shoulder length, light brown in color with a reddish tint. Um, the, her fingernails were bare. Her toenails had been painted pink. She had distinctive features upon her body. She had a vertical scar measuring about one and a half inches at the edge of her right eyebrow and her right nipple was inverted. Now due to the condition of her body, her overall health as far as nutrition and dental care was excellent. The cause of death was asphyxiation due to ligature strangulation, possibly inflicted via pantyhose. Fragments of her pantyhose along with her underwear was found inside a vaginal cavity. Um, also, looks like she was sexually um, assaulted. However, no semen was found in the body. So it was believed that she was sexually assaulted with a large blunt instrument that caused uh, bleeding from her vaginal cavity as well as her anal cavity. Um, also, it seems that the girl had had a severe beating that was inflicted upon her prior to death. She had many bruises across her body with her lips and right eyelid in particular being extensively swollen. In addition, the, her right shoulder had a deep and visible bite mark. Now, just to point out something in regards to the autopsy, um, it was thought that maybe the assailant or the killer, well, maybe the killer was a woman due to the fact that there was no seminal fluid as well as that she was sexually assaulted with an instrument. Now, I know there's been cases where, um, and I'm trying to think of that little girl who was found in the, the briefcase. And I'm sorry, not the briefcase. She was found in the um, luggage. Her name was Sandra. And I cannot remember her last name. But found out that a woman had abused her. And she was abused with an um, instrument as well. And I remember this case briefly. But I remember the woman stating that she had never the woman that killed her and assaulted her stating that she was assaulted when she was younger by a woman and so forth but it's very it's it's i want i don't want to say it's rare but there's more men um in regards to the sexual assaults there's more men you know related assaults than women so um it could be also that it was a man but the man maybe had some kind of um, dysfunction 
far as like ED or some kind of issue where he wasn't able to ejaculate. Um, but you would think even if that was the case, there would be some kind of um, evidence. So I'm not sure. But um, again, like I said, I just brought that out to state that um, they thought that maybe it was a woman as what that could have done this instead of a man. Now, there were sightings of the young woman that, well, they were sighting of a teenage girl that matched her description 24 hours prior to the police find, well, prior to her being found. Now, um, it was people in a, um, what is it called, the South End Golf Station, two employees there at a hitch and post truck stop described the girl as wearing blue jeans, a dirty yellow pullover, and a white knit sweater with noticeably large pockets that extended past her waist. And they said the girl had been carrying the red leather strap high heel sandals. Now, according to the first witness, the girl appeared disheveled. She um, had arrived at the Golf, the Southeast Golf Station, I'm sorry, not Southeast, South End Golf Station at approximately 6.30 p.m. on October 31st. And they said she had exited a blue 1973 or 74 Chevy Caprice with a light color top, which was driven by a white male. The witness also stated that the girl had asked for directions to the Texas Department of Corrections, Ellis Prison Farm. And they said after receiving directions, the girl had left the golf station on foot and was later seen walking north on Sam Houston Avenue. Now, the same girl was seen later on in the day walking alongside Interstate 45, where she again requested directions to the Texas Department of Corrections Ellis Prison Farm, claiming that a friend was waiting for her at the location. Now, in response, a waitress drew a map um, providing the directions to the girl on how to get to the prison farm. The waitress also was concerned about the girl's age and she suspected that maybe she was a runaway. So she had asked the girl where she was from and the girl said Rockport or Aransa Pass, Texas. Um, the girl also told the waitress that she was 19 years old. And the waitress said that she had told her she didn't believe that she was 19 and asked her where were her parents. And the girl had replied, who cares? Okay, so I replied, who cares? Okay, so investigators went to the Ellis Prison Farm and no one there, as far as inmates or employees, knew who the girl was. They checked the surrounding school district of Rock in a ransom pass there were some missing females but none of the descriptions of the females well the walker county jane doe didn't match any of the descriptions of the missing girls that were there um there was also some theories in regards to um if she was linked to the orange socks jane doe who was uh, murdered around Halloween, I believe one Halloween day. And that particular murder, serial, serial killer Henry Lee Lucas claimed that he had killed Orange Sox. But later on, he backtracked and said he didn't. And um, there was no conclusive evidence to really... Um, he was convicted, too, of Orange Sox murder, but then they had to overturn it because there was no evidence really pointing towards that Henry Lee Lucas was the murderer. Also, as you see in the um, Orange Sox story that I spoke about as well, that they found a hair from another uh, male. So they're trying to keep the case open and find out exactly if they can get some information on this unknown hair and um with the walker county jane though she had a bite on her right shoulder that henry that was a mo of henry lee lucas with his victims but the teeth marks was uh, inconsistent with um, henry lee lucas dentistry 
Now, there was also some other theories in the case that um, there was on December 2015, a photograph surfaced of a white female a, um, that was about 14 years old, 5 feet 4 inches, who had physical characteristics that closely matched the Walker County Jane Doe. Um, the girl in the girl was depicted or her name she was named Kathleen and they said she may have came from Corpus Christi uh, there was a photograph that um, emerged after a brother or sister uh, reviewed a private collection of images that they took of themselves at the time they were 12 and 10 at a motel in Beesville, Beesville Texas in the summer of 1980 and these siblings encountered a girl at the motel and recalled that she may have lived with a couple at the time that the picture was taken and that she had expressed her wishes to meet a friend from Sugarland Prison. And um, so the siblings believe that Kathleen may actually be the Walker County J. Doe. Um, so there is a Facebook page um, entitled Who Was Walker County Jane Doe? And a photograph is on that page. And I will list it in this video. And um, that's asking the public to appeal, you know, appealing to the public to help provide the girl's full name and origins that was in that picture. And so nothing has come about yet in regards to that. So, um, they're thinking that Kathleen was more than likely born in 1966. They're not sure the correct year, but they're thinking perhaps 1966. And again, like I said, um, I think that was about the only one of the theories that was connected to um, the Walker County Jane Doe. Um, so, so far she hasn't been named and it's my hope and prayer that one day she will be found and one day that they can find her loved ones just like with orange socks where it took years but eventually a cousin was able to name put a name to orange socks and just to provide that missing information and just to show that she was loved by someone. She did have a life. She did exist it. And I hope that the same happens for the Walker County Jane Doe. It just breaks my heart that, you know, this young girl and um, more than likely she was underage, went through just such a horrific murder. I mean, it, it's so sad and it's you know, it, makes, it just breaks my heart because I'm a mother and um, I have a da daughter. Well, you know, well, even when she was a teenager, you know, I couldn't imagine her out here amongst these wolves and people, so many people that's willing to prey on young girls or people, period. And just the evil things that can happen to young girls out here that are not protected. So I truly hope that just by providing these stories that... You know, if a young girl is in that situation that she can seek some help or seek um, to find somewhere safe or locate a family or friend or someone that can provide a safe place for her. Because just being out in these streets is not, it's not safe at all, especially for these young women. But that is not the case now. Today, investigators identified the victim as Sherry Ann Jarvis, who was just 14 years old and from Stillwater. Her family said they've been bewildered by her disappearance. Jennifer Hoff shows us the new technology that led deputies to some answers after all these years. Sherry Ann Jarvis was just 14 when deputies say she showed up at a Texas truck stop on Halloween in 1980. A day later, her body was found on the shoulder of an interstate, but it would be another 41 years before anyone knew who she was. I never like to refer to this case as being a cool case. It has always been a top priority of our department. The Walker County Sheriff credits investigators for not giving up and partnering with Othram, a company that analyzes damaged DNA from tissue samples that break into tiny pieces over time, like in the case of Jarvis. 
you said this was an incredibly complex case. What do you mean by that? There was a lot of work to kind of get this case off the ground, identify the right pieces of evidence. The CEO says his team used tissue from the girl's autopsy to build a DNA profile last year that then successfully matched six family members who recently identified Jarvis. While the rest of the world kind of moves on, um, these families that are affected by tragedy, uh, whether it's an unidentified person or, or a crime, they, they, they become fixed in time. They can't move forward. In a statement, the family said the state removed Jarvis from her home in Stillwater because she was often absent from school and they never saw her again. A deputy read a statement from them at Tuesday's announcement. Our parents passed away never knowing what happened to her or having any form of closure, but we are grateful that they never had to endure the pain of knowing her death was so brutal. Now investigators are focused on finding Sherry Ann Jarvis's killer. They said there are in fact similar crimes that happened that same exact year in that same area. So they are looking into whether all of those cases might be connected. On November 9th, 2021, the Walker County Sheriff's Office publicly announced the identity of the Walker County Jane Doe as 14 year old Sherry Ann Jarvis who had run away from Stillwater, Minnesota in 1980. Her identification had previously been announced in late September of 2021 by forensic artist Carl Koppelman, who had produced several forensic reconstructions of the victim and who announced that her identity was temporarily being withheld to give her family sufficient time to grieve privately. Sherry Ann had been placed under the state's custody at age 13 due to her habitual truancy. She ran away shortly after her 14th birthday. Her final contact with her family had been a letter pinned to her mother from Denver in which Sherry Ann indicated her intentions to eventually return home. Now, as you can see in the pre previous video I did about the Walker County Jane Doe, as we know now, Sherry Ann Jarvis, it stated that when she went to the South End, I believe that was a gas station, that she had told the waitress there that she was going to meet someone at the penitentiary um, not too far from there. And... Um, but she didn't give a name or anything. And given that Sherry Ann was from Minnesota, I'm wondering, was this a family member or someone that she was trying to get to? Um, it's kind of confusing because she told her mom she was on the way home, but the where she was going was opposite of trying to return home. So, I don't know, that kind of boggles me. But I am glad that She's finally been identified, especially for her family's sake, so that they can have some type of closure. I know it'll never bring Sherry Ann back, but at least they can rest assured knowing that um, her body has been found and um, that they can, you know, bury her the way that... Mm -hmm.